Hello, this is James M. Mitchell, your Intuitive Guidance Counselor, here again doing a weekly reading using the Lenormand. I did this type of reading last week for the first time, and I got some great response, and I want to give a special shout out to Michelle, who was kind enough to send me a comment asking for more of these types of videos, actually just this morning. So Michelle, if you're watching, this one's for you. <laughs> okay, so the deck that I'm going to be using is the Dondorf Lenormand, the same one I used last week. And so just like I did last week, I'm going to take the deck in hand and I'm going to shuffle. And the reading that I'm going to do is just like the one I did last week, which is a line of five. Um, it usually is a very direct um, answer oriented type of reading. I mean, it's very basic, it's very straightforward. Um, but there are some techniques that I also employ while I do it, and I will run through those as I do the video. So the question I'm asking the little norm, it is basically this, just what do we need to know about the week ahead? And so what I do is after I feel like I shuffle the cards enough, I usually do it this way as well. I'm going to take the deck and I'm going to cut it into three and then put it back together. And then what I do is I fan the cards out and I just pull five that I feel led to. Just any ones that kind of speak to me. Oh, I'll take that one too. Okay, so then what I do is I put the rest of the cards aside because we may need those later. And lay the cards out. And they all appear to be in the shot, which is great. Okay. And so what I do is when I do a line of five, I start with the middle card because the middle card is going to give us our focus this week. So the focus card is the ways, also known as the path also known as the crossroads. So whenever this card comes up, our focus is on choices, options, and alternatives. This card suggests that this week we're going to be faced with situations that may require us to choose the best course. This card, this card is about direction. It's about um, an approach, you know, how we approach things. So I'm seeing that with this card. So again, this card is about decisions, choices, options, and alternatives, but really at its at the core of it, it's about choosing the best course. So that's the, um, that's the ways. So then we turn the rest of the cards over. Okay, the first card is the moon. Then we have the man. Then we have on the other side of the ways, we have the sky, the scythes or the sickle. And the last card is the anchor. Okay, so what I do here is I go with the cards that are flanking the center card for a little more in depth. So we have the, the scythe and the man. Whenever the man comes up, the man always represents a man important to the reading. So if you're male and you're watching this, this reading is directly uh, focused on you because the man card is here. If you're a woman and you're watching this, this card can represent a man close to you. So that could be a father, that could be a brother, can be um, a spouse, um, somebody who is close to you and significant in your life. So um, the man card doesn't mean anything other than it represents a man. So then the, the scythe can represent things like a swift course of action. It can represent something sudden, something fast, something that's being cut or removed, um, something that's abrupt, things of that nature. So usually when whenever we have the man and another card paired with the man, this card usually describes the man in some way. So it could be saying that this card represents a man who is swift, who is precise, who um, has a need for accuracy. Um, can also represent somebody who works with sharp tools or instruments or likes to cut things. So, you know, it can represent a surgeon or something of that nature. But going with the ways being the focus card, this would represent a man needing to cut or remove something. So it could be one of the choices here is about 
elimination. What needs to be cut out? What needs to be removed? Okay, so that's the two cards flanking the center card. And then the outer cards are next. So we have the moon and the anchor. Now the moon is a card that represents something being recognized or a need for recognition. It is a career card. So it can represent, you know, your reputation, what you're known for doing. It can represent some sort of acknowledgement, like an award, uh, some sort of honor, something of that nature. And then the anchor on the opposite side of it, the anchor is also a work card. And this represents something pertaining to livelihood. It's a need for stability and security. It can represent staying put. So I'm already seeing with the ways representing choices, it could be like one of the choices here towards the end would be you know, staying put, or this card is also about something that's um, uh, a, a need to have be persistent. So it could be persistence or perseverance with this card as well. So usually what I do is, you know, pairing these two, I would see this as maybe um, securing one's career or securing uh, some kind of recognition or some sort of stability regarding one's career. So it could be with the ways and these two cards being career and work oriented cards, it could be that there is somebody watching this video who needs to be making some kind of significant career decision. You know, so I'm looking at those. Then what we do is we take the first two cards because the first two cards are approaching the middle card. So these could be like some past influences or something that's factoring into the ways. Now I could also look at it as like this is one option on terms of a choice option or alternative and then on this side we can either read it as what happens after the decision is made or this could represent like option B. If this is option A then this is option B. So having said this we have the man and the moon so again the man just represents the man then the moon card would represent the reputation of the man um, some sort of recognition for the man, something that the man may need to see that he's not seeing. It could also be about the man's reputation. What is he known for? It could also be with the two hearts here. Hearts represents domestic matters, can represent destiny. Um, I tend to follow the teachings of Kathleen Matthews and a lot of the techniques that I'm employing in this reading come from her book, which is the complete Lenormand Oracle Handbook, which is a great resource. Like I said last week, it's a wonderful resource. And so she has an idea that hearts can represent the path of destiny. So it could be representative of the man's destiny, the man's, you know, path, the man's calling. You know, sometimes the moon can be about vocation. So like, what is the man being called to do? And is he doing it? So, and if not, then he may need to make some decisions or choices so he can put himself on the path to doing that. So that's how I'm seeing these two cards. Then on this side, we have this, um, the scythe and the anchor. So it could be something that's going to be removed that's going to create more stability. It could be, you know, securing something by removing something. It could be like um, something abrupt or some sort of risk or some sort of um, removal regarding one's livelihood or one's work, one's routine. Something and it could be like needing to change some sort of routine with these two cards. So I'm seeing that with these cards. Okay, so one of the techniques that I used last week is I use what's called the hidden dynamics. And so sometimes that can kind of give us a, a little bit more information as to what the choices or the options are. So um, what we do is we look at the outer, we call these pips, the playing cards are called pips. So here we have, with the moon, we have the eight of, eight of hearts. So that's, you take the number eight, and then on this side, we have the nine of spades. So you take the number nine, add the eight and the nine, and that's 17. And in the Lenormand deck, the 17th card is the stork. And so whenever the stork comes up, one of the options that may be needing to be faced this week or looked at is needing to make some kind of change. The stork represents to change and improvement, something that's um, new, or it could represent a, a, an option where we have to move on, because this card is about migration and moving on. So this card represents change, improvements, moving on. Then the inner pips, we take the ace of hearts, which is one, and then we have here the jack of diamonds. The jack is 11 in playing card car cartomancy. So one and 11 is 12. 
And this is very interesting because this is one of our hidden dynamic cards in last week's video as well. And it is the birds. So the birds represents communication, it represents conversation, it can represent speculation, it can represent something that needs to be negotiated or discussed. Um, because the birds can represent anything verbal. So it could be like one of the options, it could be like needing to have an important conversation, something needs to be negotiated, it could represent some sort of change that needs to be negotiated. Um, but I usually look at the dynamics as the, the focus card being what the center of it is. So the ways represents choice, decision, um, an alternative. So it could be, the choice could be between um, starting something new, you know, some sort of making some sort of change, um, some sort of improvement. And then the other part over here is like, you know, needing to talk about it. So I see one as taking some court, some kind of action and the other one just, we're just going to talk about it. The other thing about the birds, it could represent something that's causing some sort of frustration, anxiety, or upset because those, that's the emotional side of the birds. So I'm seeing that. Now what we can also do is take the pips and add them all together. So we have an eight, we have a one, we have the queen of diamonds here, which is a 12. So eight and one is nine, 12 is 21. Right, yeah, 21, then we have 11. So 21 and 11 is 32, and then we have a nine, 32 and nine, become 41. And so what we do is because there's 36 cards in the deck, we take the four and the one and add them together and we have five. And the fifth card in the deck is the tree. So the pips adding up to or reducing to the tree, the tree represents growth, it represents well-being, it represents one's um, spiritual and personal growth. It can also represent connections. So it could be part of the whole reading this week is about development, one's personal growth and spiritual development, about making connections. It's about you know, something, whatever the change is, it's going to take time to grow because this card is all about growth. So the seven of hearts represents destined connections. So it's about, you know, what kind of connections can you be making? What kind of connections need to be making? You know, going with the birds on the side of the tree, then it becomes like, you know, having conversations, networking, things of that nature. So along with that, so it's about making connections. It's about well-being. It's about things taking time, like the roots are there. It's just now taking, uh, taking time for it to grow. So again, these are your cards for the week. We have the moon, the man, the ways, the scythe, and the anchor. So it's again about, you know, one's, the, a man in particular, because a man card showed up. It's about his work or his career, his reputation, and having to make some sort of choice or decision about that, or some sort of alternative, or maybe a change in direction. And then with that, something is going to need to be removed, or that the change is going to have to be done quickly, uh, suddenly. And it's so he can, you know, um, anchor, I'm saying anchor something, secure something, something related to his livelihood. So these are the cards for the week. I am James Tim Mitchell, your intuitive guidance counselor, and I look forward to sharing this space here again with you in our next video. And like I said last week, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more of it, please let me know in the comment section below. And if you see something different, if you happen to read Lenormand and you see something different and you want to share your thoughts, I would be open and receptive to seeing what it is that you see because I believe every Lenormand reader doesn't see the same thing. And there are so many combinations of permutations with the cards that you know, you could be seeing something that I could say, oh, wow, that was fascinating. I didn't even see that. So if you want to share your thoughts, also leave those in the comment section below. Again, I'm Jameson Mitchell. This has been your weekly outlook with the Lenormand, and I look forward to seeing you in our next video. And until then, have a great week and take care.